Yes guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to a brand new video. The general interest for window is already here and that means that it's time for me to do my dream signings for Arsenal January 2024. Now listen, Mikelata says that we are short, we need some signings and that is why I've decided to put down a couple of names that I think Arsenal can actually sign to improve the squad but also to compete on all fronts, FA Cup, Champions League and the Premier League. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. Let's dive into my dream signings, January 2024. Number one, I've gone with Ivan Tony. He is such a darling to the Arsenal fan base. Everyone likes him, including myself, Kosi. And I tell you what, um, if you don't like Ivan Tony, you absolutely have a problem. Now, my problem with Ivan Tony actually uh, and the deal is that he, uh, Brentford are asking for 100 million, and that could actually. Uh, pose a problem. I think the big problem is can us to spend 100 million uh, in January? It's not happening. Can we structure a deal with Brentford so that we can actually sign him on loan and eventually pay the money in installments starting in the summer? That is actually very, very possible. So we are waiting to see what happens with Ivan Tony. I would love him to sign for Arsenal. I would love Arsenal to sign uh, a striker of his stature. So one of the advantages he has over everyone at Arsenal he is focused about you know goals. He's focused on uh, scoring goals, and that is something that no other player has at Arsenal. All the other players will pass the ball. All the other players will um, want a one-two touch. Ivan Tony literally wants that ball in the back of the net. That is his job. That is his profile. That is what you want. Uh, th that is what you want to see. And. You know, in the later parts of the campaign, when we play the likes of Bayern, when we play the likes of Barcelona, there will come a time when you need that extra, you know, brilliance, like Harry Kane. That's why he's going to Bayern. He can win you the Champions League, right? Like Arling Haaland. That's why he's at Man City. He has won them the Champions League. So for me, Ivanson is in that caliber. A hundred million in January. I, I wouldn't really, really care if Arsenal had the money, but I don't think we do have the money. We have financial uh, fair play problems. But I think Ivan Tony um, is a player all of us will agree about. Good guy, good striker, Premier League proven, 20 goals plus last campaign. Arsenal don't have that. And if it costs 100 million for us to get that into the squad, um, I think we should. Now, if, the, if you ask me the chances of us signing Ivan Tony in January, I'm still going to be very adamant. I'll say ar around uh, 4.5 out of 10. That's 45%, um, you know, uh, chance. And why? Because I think Arsenal can still convince Brentford to get this deal done. Arsenal can still talk to Brentford um, so that we can actually sign him in some kind of, uh, you know, a structured deal. Brentford understand our FFP uh, situation. That's why they gave us David Dreyer, actually, um, on, on, on a, an initial loan deal. We will pay uh, starting, I think, this summer. I still think Ivan Tony could be coming to Arsenal in the same way, in a similar deal. Initial loan deal, and then eventually we will be paying the money. But if, if you ask me, out of the strikers that we uh, can sign, there is Dizan Vlahovic, there is um, you know, uh, Teremi at Porto, there is um, uh, you know, Girassi, Ivan Tony would be my number one or number two striker. And why? I think he fits the profile. He actually fits the, pro, uh, the, the Premier League. Next on my list is still a striker. And I think I tell you what, this is, um, you know, Jalen Brand actually, not a striker, but uh, more of a number 10, more of a number 8, um, a midfielder. So Jalen Brand is one of the players that I've looked at for, uh, you know, a, a, for a, a number of, um, you know, time. And I think he is, he deserves a big move at, at, at this stage in his career. Otherwise, uh, it is actually not going to happen. So he's played as a 10, he's played as a number 8, especially last campaign. He's played as a right winger uh, at Palevacuzen alongside Kai Havers. So Kai Havers has played on the right and Julian Brandt has played on the left or vice versa. I think Arsenal needs a versatile midfielder. I don't think we will sign two, three midfielders. That is um, uh, a little bit out of our budget. But we might actually need... That guy that has it all, that guy that has the touch, that guy that has everything um, you want in a midfielder, apart from the defensive part of the game. And that could be Julian Bryant. Now, he's getting older. He's um, uh, approaching 28. Like, time really, really flies. I, I saw this guy um, a couple of years ago. He was around 19. And I was like, Julian Bryant is the feature of the right wing. But he's, um, he's suffered a lot at, uh, at Borussia Dortmund. They've you know, they've, they've, they've given him less game time at times, and when they've given him the game time, 
they have switched him from position to position uh, to position. But Arsenal right now needs a player that can actually come in and do the job like Ilkay Gundogan did it for Manchester City. For me, Julian Brandt is in that caliber, is in that category. He is clutch, creates a lot of chances, can score a couple of goals. Why don't we just go for this guy? Like, why haven't we signed him yet? Um, despite the fact that every summer, every general transfer window, Arsenal are linked with him and the deal just never happens. So Julian Brandt, one of the players that I really like in the German Bundesliga, and if Arsenal considered him, it would be actually a very, very good deal. Next one is Osmond Diamonde. Now, I've talked about Osmond Diamonde uh, on the show for a couple of, um, uh, on a couple of, of uh, times. And I think Diamonde, being young, 19, as a centre-back, that is what we need at the moment. Very versatile as well. But with William Saliba at 22, he's uh, flying, he's doing you know, his best football in his life, and he's not even yet to become a peak centre back. I think you just need someone to add, to be an understudy to William Saliba, right? Now, Osman Diamonde has the quality of a player like William Saliba. He's got the ability to cover for Gabriel, and he's got the ability to cover for William Saliba as well. I think you can play him at right back. You can play him at left back. It depends on uh, what Mikel Arteta wants. We have seen him play Timber at right back and left back as well, um, and it's actually worked out. But Odium, Od Od Odman, uh, 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 you know, Diamonde, Osman young intelligent quick versatile and very very agile i would i would love him to come to arsenal um in january he's the only center back he's the only defender that i think arsenal should be worth um, you know uh, you sh should actually focus on in january i don't think there is any other defender that uh, we should waste our time on osmond diamonde sporting lisbon that is the deal i like him I think he's a likable lad. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's done a lot of minutes at his age. He's played in the Europa League. He's played in the, um, you know, Premier Division for Sporting Lisbon. So, definitely, if Arsenal bring him in as an understudy to Saliba and Gabriel, I think that would be a good deal. And I also think that, despite the fact that Jakub Kivio actually has come in and done some good work. I'm not convinced about Jak Jakub Kivio and this Arsenal system. It's either Kivio will, will shine next season or next season but one, or we might actually sell him. I won't be surprised if Arsenal, uh, you know, get around 35 million in Jakub Kivio and we let him go and we we'll bring in a player like Osman Diamonde for another 35 million. But of course, that will depend on what happens with Jakub Kivio. Okay, so next one on my list is... Um, Ryan Sharkey. Okay, so Ryan Sharkey is the exciting one. And I'm happy to say that we are looking for a winger. We are also looking for a 10, 8, um, and this is the guy. Ryan Sharkey is the next Eden Hazard. Works a lot, just 20, and Leon are happy and lucky to absolutely have such a guy. Because the talent that he possesses, they, um, you know, what he provides the team with, the output as well, it is mad. Like, real mad numbers. And I really, really do rate him as a player. I think he is going to become Eden Hazard. I, I think he will become Eden Hazard. Now, Chelsea are looking at him, and that explains all the Eden Hazard vibe around him. Uh, a couple of clubs like Liverpool always looked at him in the summer. PSG wanted him as well to replace Kylian Mbappe. That is the guy we're looking about. We're talking about. That is the player uh, we are looking at. Now, Ryan Shaki has a problem. He's, you know, playing for a struggling side uh, in Lyon, and they absolutely need him. They really need him to uh, to stay up. They really need him to, um, you know, stay uh, not to get relegated. Right? He's their main source of cre you know creativity. He's their main source of goals, apart from Alexander Lacazette, who's you know scoring a couple of goals for them as well. So. Ryan Sharkey, I think Arsenal, if, if you're looking for one player to cover on the right wing, left wing, number 10, and left number 8, and right number 8, that is Ryan Sharkey. There is nothing he cannot do, and there is nothing I think um, you can't teach him. He's just 20. Like we've seen uh, older players come at Arsenal, the likes of Kai Havertz, the likes of Granit Xhaka. We have seen them adapt to, to new roles under Mikel Arteta, and it's actually worked out very well. So, I won't be surprised if Arsenal sign a 20-year-old player like Ryan Sharkey, 
and we turn him into a striker, we turn him into uh, a false nine, or we turn him into an inverted winger. And I would love to say it. I would really, really love to say it. So Ryan Sharkey is one of the names that most of you will actually agree with. He's um phenomenal. That, that is the word. He is phenomenal. He's sensational. He is a joy to watch at the moment. But also, um, how much would he cost? Probably above 50 million, right? And that maybe that's one of the reasons why Arsenal, like, we can't just go for Ryan Sharkey. We can't sign Ryan Sharkey. He might cost above 50 million. A couple of clubs are going to be interested. And Leon will not want to sell. And we know, right? Uh, Jean Mikel Aules, when he says I'm not selling, he is actually not selling. You know, you know, you, you know the Alexander Lacazette vibe. Uh, remember the, the memories with Jose M. Owa um, and a couple of other players, Lucas Paqueta and all those players. When he says, I am selling at the moment, he is selling. When he says, I am not selling, uh, he's not selling. So I don't think Jean Mikel Aules is going to be selling Brian Shack, his best player at Lyon at the moment, um, as they try to survive relegation. It would be a stupid move, and I don't think that guy is going to be stupid in this January. But I would love him to be stupid so that we can actually uh, get him, you know, get him out of Lyon. Right, of course, the next one is Victor Rossiman. Victor Rossiman uh, is a player that we have talked about, and there are actually new developments on the um, Victor Rossiman deal. So with Victor Rossiman, why I like him, he is young. Right? So that means that he comes into the squad and he fits into the project. He fits into the profile of players we have at the moment. So imagine Osimen, Jesus, Saka, Martinelli, ESR, Kai Havers. You know, that 23, 24, 25 bracket, that is where, um, you know, Osimen is. But also the other thing I love about Osimen, he has now proven to me that he is a real goal scorer. I would be an absolute idiot to criticize Arsenal looking at Victor Rossiman. And my gut feeling is, is, says this. If we don't sign Ivan Tony in January, Arsenal will sign Victor Rossiman in the summer. I don't think it's going to be uh, Ivan Tony January, Ivan Tony summer. I don't think that's the, the way uh, it's going to be. I think it's going to be Ivan Tony January, Victor Rossiman in the summer. It's the same thing that happened with Moises Caicedo and Declan Rice. Arsenal wanted Declan Rice as um, a top target. But we were willing to sacrifice signing Declan Rice just in, just in order to sign uh, Moises Caicedo. And probably uh, that could have won us the lead at the time because Moises Caicedo was, um, uh, was on fire. He was actually doing very well last campaign. So that could have won us the lead, right? But when we didn't get Moises Kaiser, when Bre Bre Brighton said, we are not selling at the moment, then it was easy. Arsenal said, we are not coming back. We are actually interested in Declan Rice. No other choices. So I think it's the same thing with uh, this man, uh, Victor Rossiman. Arsenal will try to sign him in the summer, right? In January, it's a deal you cannot do. He has just signed a new deal. Release clause is very, very massive. Unless, unless there is a club that is trying to trigger his release clause, which I don't think is going to happen, this is the deal for the summer. But I would love him to come in January. His goals would impact our squad. His goals would actually um, you know, impact the team very, very much. Imagine having uh, a Victor Resimen up top in the last 19 games or the last uh, you know, 17 of the, wind, of, of, the, of, of the season. And you have a player like Victor Resimen up top and he's scoring goals and he's running up and down and he's... Um, you know, winning you games, he might be the reason why we are ranked at the same le level as Man City uh, at some point in the future, or even better than them if they lose their machine uh, in Arling Haaland. So I would love to see uh, Victor Rossiman uh, right there at Arsenal in January. It's part of my dream signings. And lastly is that man, Harvey Barnes. I've talked about Harvey Barnes before, and I don't think many, many of you are actually aware and even happy about me talking about um, Harvey Barnes. Why I think Harvey Barnes is such a good signing, and this might not be um, a theory we, we share on this channel, and, and I respect that, but why I think Harvey Barnes would be a very good signing, we are looking for a winger for Christ's sake. We are looking for someone to push Saka and Martinelli, and I think Harvey Barnes has got it in him to actually produce you know, uh, you know, know, high-quality work. Now, it has not worked out at, uh, at Newcastle yet, so we would actually bring him, in, uh, bring him on a loan. 
But I still think it is something that we, we, we can do. It's a deal that we can actually do, right? It depends on how you look at it. It depends on your lens. But Harvey Barnes, in my opinion, he is actually uh, not a bad player. So those are my dream signings. They are quite unbelievable. So I think Harvey Barnes, Newcastle, are not letting go of Harvey Barnes. Um, I don't think, um, uh, you know, already Dolorentes at Napoli is selling his best player at the moment. I don't think uh, he's leaving in January, Victor Resteman. I've looked at Ryan Sharkey. It's, um, it's one where we have to plead, right? It's one where we will have to plead with Leon. But we have seen Leon sell in January. They have sold uh, Bruno Guimaraes in January. We have seen them sell, um, um, you know, a couple of, I think, a couple of other players in January as well. So if you get, go in with a good offer, you might actually get lucky uh, with, um, you know, Ryan Sharkey. Uh, we talked about uh, Osmond Diamonde. He's uh, a no-brainer, 19 years of age. You can buy him now and sell him for absolute, absolute big profits in the future. We've talked about, uh, you know, Gilles Brandt, one of my favorite players in the German Bundesliga. And, of course, that man, Ivan Tony up top. So those are my dream signings. And those are the players that I would wish Arsenal to look at come this summer. Now, listen, purely hypothetical, I'm not saying these guys are signing. I'm saying that is where I want Arsenal to focus. But if we brought in like Matthias Delete, I'm happy to announce Matthias Delete um, as a new Arsenal signing. Right. So tomorrow I'll let you know what are the names that Mikel Arteta and Edu have identified that they are looking at. Watch out for that one.